If you want to find the most elusive particles in our universe, the trick isn't to look up, it's to go down. Hiding underneath a mountain in the middle of Japan is a $140 million science experiment. It's hunting for something so tiny, scientists have had to build a massive detector bigger than the Statue of Liberty. But if it's successful, it'll help us explore our own origins. The scientists are hunting for ghost-like particles called neutrinos. We don't actually know what they look like, so this is just our best guess. That's because they're smaller than an atom and float through almost everything. In fact, there's billions of them passing through you each second. They travel at the speed of light and come from a variety of places. Our own sun makes neutrinos, and so do nuclear reactors. But the ones these scientists are most interested in come from a massive dying star, a supernova eight times bigger than our sun. We wouldn't exist without supernovae. When they explode, they spread critical elements, including carbon and oxygen, throughout the cosmos. We would like to understand how those stars explode and how they work. And one of the best ways to do that is through their neutrino emissions. And Therefore, studying neutrinos is a, an indirect but a definite way to explore our own origins. So catching one of these tiny particles is like a window into the past, but spotting them is virtually impossible, unless you've got one of these. This is the Super Kamiokande. The science from this experiment and the decommissioned one that came before it have already won two Nobel Prizes. It's normally filled with water, but we've been given access while it's down for maintenance. Lining the walls are thousands upon thousands of gold-hued detectors, each of them larger than a human head. They're the key to spotting a neutrino. Basically, they're light bulbs in reverse. So in a regular light bulb, electricity goes in and light comes out. With one of these detectors, light goes in and electricity comes out. Here we have 11,129 PMTs. It's really, really very sensitive uh, photosensor. So one of these could see a flashlight on Earth from the moon? Yes. Right. Wow. <laughs> when it's all up and running, the water in the tank acts like a trap. When a neutrino hits a water molecule, it creates a minuscule flash and sets off the detectors. This means the water needs an incredible amount of purification and recirculation, which goes on in these pipes. That makes the water corrosive because all of the impurities have been removed, which means when it touches anything that's not water, it tries to suck all the minerals out. We've dropped things in, it happens when people are working. And one of the interesting things that got dropped in was a chrome-plated hammer. A few years later, we were servicing the detector and we found the camera. And there was a chrome shell, just wafer thin, and the interior was hollow. The water had eaten all the metal out of the hammer. The reason why the tank is getting an upgrade now, though, is because scientists are hoping to capture more neutrinos by looking further into space, 35,000 times further. Professor Vagans has been leading the upgrade. This is my secret underground lair. And the key is in the water. The water is already pretty special, but he believes a much more obscure element holds the secret to unlocking the experiment's full potential. This is gadolinium. It's a silvery white rare earth metal that he and his colleague believe could make Super K much more sensitive. It's a, it's a very strange element. It's very obscure. Nobody's really heard of it. Um, but it's got very unusual properties. The property that we care about is that it loves to eat neutrons more than anything in this world. And when it eats a neutron, when it absorbs a neutron, it makes its own flash of light. When a neutrino hits the pure water with gadolinium inside, it creates a gadolinium heartbeat. So in one point in space, separated by about 30 millionths of a second, you get boom, boom, flash, flash. Flash, flash. And that double flash is unique and distinctive and allows you to wipe out the background. So all of a sudden you have this clear view of the distant sky. And this will allow us to see 
supernova neutrinos from a billion years ago. Professor Vagans had to build his own detector, one 250th the size of Super Kamiokande, to show that it wouldn't destroy the experiment. And getting around with the stuff hasn't always been easy, as the professor learned when trying to board a flight in the US. And they opened up the luggage and they found a kilogram of white powder. If this ever happens to you, it could. Don't say the following. Don't open that, it's really pure. So I went to, I was, I was arrested. <laughs> Since we visited, the tank has now been repaired, re-waterproofed, and some broken light detectors were replaced. But even if this upgraded Super Kamiokande doesn't spot any supernova neutrinos, that's a win for science too. Neutrinos are the lightest things we know about. So if these things decay, that implies new physics, new particles, a whole new underlying world. And so, essentially, it, as I say, it's really a case where you can't lose. Either you measure something everybody wants to measure and learn from, or if you don't see it, then you have a whole new world opening up of discovery. So either way, it's exciting. <laughs>